Analysis. Let's turn now to Tom Ara. He's the global and US co-chair of the media, sport and entertainment sector at DLA Piper. Thanks for joining us. Now, as Thank I mentioned, you. the details about what's been agreed hasn't been made public yet. But what can you tell us about some of those non-negotiables and the more ambiguous areas where there might have been a bit more pushback? Sure. Well, thank you for having me join again today. Um, the two key pieces that remained open and were under continuing negotiation since uh, months now uh, were, in particular, artificial intelligence and uh, the uh, streaming residuals. Uh, it appears that a deal has been made on both those issues. The specifics, as you noted, have not yet been disclosed, but I would expect that there will be some significant movement on the issue of the streaming residuals and what uh, that will look like for writers who have long complained that they have not been fairly compensated in that area, including some uh, meaningful percentage, I presume, of, of revenues that will be allocated to the writers for the work they've done. As far as artificial intelligence, uh, one of the hot topic issues was whether the studios could use uh, the uh, many, many uh, stories and scripts that they have accumulated over decades for the purposes of creating uh, new works internally or at least beginning ideas. And I would suspect that there have been some parameters put around some of those uses that uh, are, are acceptable to both sides. And of course, there were issues around writers' rooms and some others uh, that uh, seem to have been nailed down. And we'll see in the coming days what the details of each of those uh, issues are. The CEOs of Disney and Netflix attended the bargaining period, which goes to show how eager production houses are to get shows back on air. But to secure the deal, two successful votes have to happen before the strike is over. Tell us more about what those votes are and, you know, if there's a risk of it not happening. Well, uh, the, the risk seems to be low. Uh, the uh, bargaining group on behalf of the union has lauded this as, as, a, as a victory, as, as a great accomplishment. Uh, the committee will approve it and then submit it to the members for vote in the coming days. Uh, one significant point uh, to make here is we're basically, the deal was made on the 146th day of, of this uh, Writers Guild of America strike. And the last strike that went longer than that, the longest strike in recorded uh, WGA history was 154 days. Now, uh, note that the strike doesn't technically end until the Guild has approved this and the ink is so-called dry on the agreement. So hopefully that can occur in the next seven or eight days so that uh, we don't uh, see a scenario where that prior record is broken. But uh, in essence, uh, it seems that this is headed for approval and the members will welcome it and welcome going back to work. So what does that mean for the consumer then? When will writers and the shows that they write return? From what I understand, talk shows will be first off the back. But what will the consumer look forward to seeing again, either on streaming services or on TV? Sure. As you noted, talk shows, uh, once the ink is dry on the Writers Guild agreement, the talk shows uh, will be able to resume. Uh, but uh, the talk shows are governed uh, by a different agreement uh, at SAG-AFTRA, which, as you know, is also on strike. Uh, the agreement that governs the performers that appear in film and television programs, uh, those uh, performers are still on strike, and that agreement remains to be uh, uh, brought to a conclusion, uh, the new agreement. And so we can't expect uh, those performers to get back to work until uh, the union and the studios and streamers get back to the bargaining table and iron out a deal there. So what does that mean then for actors? They're going to stay on strike as long as they get a deal in the same way that the writers have? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, and, and I think the most important part of your, your question is the uh, same deal as the writers have. What appears to be happening here is a bit different from prior historical strikes and negotiation patterns. In the past, the guilds that went on strike together or had agreements that were expiring together tended to kind of follow the lead of the prior union that made an agreement with the studios 
uh, in, in concluding their agreement. That hasn't happened here with what happened with the Directors Guild of America that entered into an agreement earlier this year with the studios. The Writers Guild agreement appears to be an improvement over that agreement and not the same. It may be, and it seems to be, that the SAG-AFTRA a union may be looking for uh, its own improvements under its agreement, and they do have unique issues that will need to be addressed. So you are correct in that until such time that the SAG-AFTRA union has entered into its new agreement with the studios, those performers will not be returning to work, and that negotiation has yet to begin. All right, Tom Ara, thank you for your time. Global and U.S. Chair of the Media, Sport and Entertainment Sector.